This is an Edison gem. I'm gonna do a couple of videos on Edison gems because some of the earlier ones are, or the earliest ones are really interesting. This is really the second version of the gem and there were variations for many years. The gem was a really good seller for Edison. It was his least expensive machine and it was designed to compete with some of the other inexpensive machines on the market at the time. So instead of a wooden case, it was a, a cast metal uh, case here. This version is called the branded gem because it has uh, the logo impressed in it in ink on the lid instead of a decal, which came later. So the original gem from uh, 1899 was nicknamed the drip pan gem because it had a pan on the bottom, but this one has a case, so there was no need for that. It has a, a, a wooden base. So this is the first version that has the wooden base. And unlike the drip pan gem, uh, the ID plates on the back, and as you can see, there's it's there, right? Yeah, there's the word gem written across the front. It also has the larger gem horn. And specifically, this has the second version of the reproducer, which was again, one specifically for the gem. Later versions had a reproducer carriage that could carry a Model C and later a Model H reproducer, um, which was standard uh, uh, for many of his machines and so it was interchangeable with other machines. So you have to take a good look at this decal or this impressed ink pressing here to see um, what's on the lid. So I'm gonna bring you in and show you the close-ups, a close-up view of this machine. One of the improvements on this gem was that it not only had a reproducer, but it had a recorder. So this machine uh, could actually be recorded on on the wax cylinder. You'd have to shave it and then put the cylinder on and use this to record the cylinder. And you can see the sapphire there is sharp. And so it cuts a groove into the record. And then this reproducer has a smooth sapphire and that could be used to play the record. They were still specifically gem reproducers and recorders. As I said, it later was able to take the Model C. As you can see, it's a very nice machine. It's a key wind. Later, they had a crank on it. And this one it couldn't be wound up while it was playing. On this one, the on-off speed control was moved to the other side. You could turn it on and off and adjust its speed by rotating that. So a little bit different than the first gym that I showed you. Let's take a look at the lid. There's the lid, and you can see the stamped Edison gem phonograph called the branded lid before they came out with the decal. So why don't we give this machine a try? As I was uh, setting it up, I noticed that the crane is anchored to the right side of the machine and not the left. Usually it's anchored on the left side. I thought, oh, they must have some re for some reason decided to move it. And then I realized, you know, it's a bit of a hassle. Well, not a hassle, but it's weird that when you move this, you end up moving the crane and the horn at the same time. And that maybe that was the reason why they moved it to the other side. I also noticed the crane, the slot for the crane is a little smaller than the later ones. So your crane must be narrower at the end that goes in there. So I'll open it up. I'll put a cylinder on. Let's give this a try. I wound it up. A plunger over there, I give that a press and get this in the right place. And hopefully that'll work. My Idaho. I wonder if it had the same meaning as it does today. <laughs> <laughs> 